Welcome to jobskillshare.org. One of the things that I do on this site and platform channel, when I see something good from other sites or websites or courses or anything like that, and if I think that this will benefit our members, I love to make a video on it. And then I like to share that source so then we appreciate the work behind it. Uh, so this is why in this video, I'm not able to show the logo and everything, but I'm going to share the link and you can see yourself where this is coming from. But the important information over here is for people who would like to become an IT professional and they're still learning in learning mode right now. They're still preparing their resume. And now after a month or a week or maybe in a few days, you're trying to go out there. So what are these important things that you need to make sure you need to understand before you start applying for any entry-level IT position or any IT support position overall. It does not matter. So 12 traits hiring managers look for in help desk job candidates. And that's a really good, great title by itself. What are they looking for, actually? You know, I know you guys are preparing yourself for technical stuff, which you're getting from our site. We are giving you all the soft skills, too. Uh, but, you know, can we just talk about it? Just a quick talk. What are, what are people looking for? A real desire to help people. This person does a great job because they truly want to help others, not because it's their job. They work hard to play hard, find joy in their day-to-day -day tasks, and have passion for their role. Now, you know, this is the piece that I, I tell my, my members in my uh, courses all over, that if you're coming to this course, someone told you that you will make 60K, 70K, or above 100 in IT positions very quickly, and if you don't have the desire to help other people, then this job is not for you because you may land a job, a very high paying job in, in the US. I know people, they have landed it. And then after a few months, they left it because they did not have the desire to help people. If you're not a people per person, if you cannot talk to them, if you if you don't find joy in, in helping other people, then trust me. The support position is not for you because every day you're going to be doing this and you're going to be dealing with people. And if you don't have smile on your face and you don't feel joy in fixing something, then this, this, this is not for you. Second point is that work with and not for the customers. So basically what this means that you're working with the other person, kind of like a partner, you know, you're working in this company as a partner because you see a problem. And you as a help desk or an IT support person, you have kind of like a responsibility to work for this company to make sure that this problem is resolved and not just temporarily, maybe you have a better solution for the company. So you feel like you're involved with that person, not as a customer, like, you know, somebody call you like, ah, okay, I just fixed this and I'm just going to, you know, like, you know, like treat them like, you know, just kind of like, this is my job. This is, this is what I'm, I get paid for. So whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, this person called me, I fix it and that's it and done. I have a temporary fix. I'm going to keep doing that. This person will not notice. So no, you should really, really come with a solution where then maybe they don't call you for the same problem. They may call you for a new problem, which you should be happy about that because it's a new problem. Let's just fix it, you know? So that's how your, your attitude towards a customer should be like, you know, you treat them as a partner, you know? So another one is a positive and optimistic approach to problem solving. Support job can be difficult. We know that, but this person doesn't allow negative customer interactions to become contagious, contagious, contagious. I mean, forgive me about my English. <laughs> In the face of tense or charged situation, this person knows how to stay logical and focus on solving the issue at hand. They approach customers with empathy, don't complain about customers when things get tough, and look for what can be learned from the situation. Now remember, there will be always a situation where someone will be angry. Not at you, they are just going to be angry because maybe they were working on a document for long hours and now something crashed. The system is not coming up. You can't really do anything. You have the backup, but still that that piece of you know information is lost. Of course, they're going to be pissed off. So what you can do, you, are you going to go with the face with, with the, you know, with the, they're angry, you got angry and all that kind of stuff. That's not going to work, you know, for, uh, and, you know, and in a business too, for a CEO or someone who's running the business, for them, they're going to be looking at you. How did you respond to this person? Because I know they were angry and stuff like that, which, you know, they can take care of it and HR and stuff like that. But how did you respond to them? Did you also got mad because, you know, 
you were fixing a problem, you couldn't fix it. So no, that's not a that's not an approach. You should be really, really calm. Another person might say something that you know you think that they, it was directed to me as an IT support professional. You should be very professional and just take it, you know, like a you know, just just kind of like ignore that kind of stuff and all that neg- negativity. And that's you think you know that this person is uh, it, they don't mean it. And even if they do mean it, still you have other options and not go, uh, you know, directly with them, you know, like, you know, start talking back to them or something like that. So you should be very calm about these type of situations. And if you do that, trust me, you're going to go um, very far in IT position. If you can handle a situation like this, then I'm telling you, you have no problem uh, working in any IT support position. Create and cultivate a playful and relaxed work environment. This person enjoys themselves at work, spreading a positive can-do attitude. A great support agent uh, integrates a bit of fun into their daily tasks to make everyone loads and lighter. So what this is like this, you know, have you seen a a support person walking in the hallway with a very, you know, moody face? Um, Most of the time you will not see that. You probably will see someone smiling. A lot of time they smile, you know, like just because that's how they are. You know, they love doing, they love helping other people. They love to, you know, start conversation with someone and then that this is where they you know this this is like how you are noticed in the company and that's why people rate helped us uh, very high in the company when it comes to uh, support uh, like you know ratings they rate them high because they know they appreciate it because they, they see the energy in you and this is why you're doing this job because you have this type of energy uh, that other people don't so that's why you are in help desk and you're in IT position because you're you're you, you're creating this nice positive vibe around you you know so that's that should be the way uh, you know you should be uh, conducting yourself collaborative team spirit this person feels responsible not only for their own tasks but also cares about their team workload too they know when to ask for and help, offer help and understand how much they can take on one time uh, they care about the team success and are happy you know okay so this is about you know like okay in IT support job trust me if you are not playing with the team, if you're not going with the team, if you're not collaborating with the team, then you're making your own job very, very hard because there are going to be times where you're going to need help. There are going to be times where you're ne- you will need to learn more from somebody else. Even if this person have less knowledge than you, they may be better in one side, which they you may need at some point. So you really need to work with your team members. Uh, and, f- you know, it's a physical thing too. You know, you may be working, you're a human. Sometimes you may be working on multiple things and you may uh, feel like, you know, okay, I really need to uh, spread out these responsibilities. So this is where a team, uh, a positive team members, a, a good uh, you know, relationship with your managers or a good relationship with your staff members or other co-workers. This is where you're going to get a lot of help. And this is where you can grow too. If you want to learn more, you need more time, even at work. You know, you, you're not uh, basically in help that you're not like 24-7 working and running around. There's a lot of time that you can learn. And this is where if you have a good team, then you won't feel like stressed, you know, then you're not like, okay, this this responsibility is taken care of by somebody else. So I have some time to learn more, stuff like that you can do then. Passion uh, for the product. An awesome support agent is an informed champion of their products, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this this could be m- multiple things. When I say when they say product, this could be like about one specific company running a big product and that's where they, the help desk is supporting that product. So yeah, then, you know, this person will be really, really involved in that product and kind of like, you know, feel like that's their own product. So, you know, you're working on, on these products uh, a lot and you know uh, ins and out, you know. But... Uh, in in other way, the term product may be used for a company that's just like uh, it's kind of like a, let's say an idea or some kind of uh, nonprofit where they run based on some something that you know certifications or something like that. Then yeah, it's not a product; it's more like products. You're working on many other things. We're working on ideas, working on the full strategic strategic pathway of the company. So you're kind of like involved in that. So. Yeah, definitely you will have a passion towards that to understand more and to be and, and and this way you can troubleshoot better too. If you know the product well, then this this way you can know the the back end, how this thing is working, and you may be able to resolve it yourself and you can easily tell the system admin or network engineers that, oh okay, this is your this is your side and that's where the problem is and you make their life easy too. All star communication skills. 
I mean, the help desk is is communication. You know, you always you are always in some type of communication. Either you're with clients, members, uh, your own coworkers, or uh, you know any anything that involves help desk. You're you're going to be working on you know applications. So uh, applications will be supported by so many different departments, and then other people are going to be using that applications like you know normal people like public. So you will need to have a really good communication skills. Um, uh, and that does not mean you need to have like a perfect English, grammatically correct, all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, I, I, I spent like 15 years in IT. I still can, you know, do uh, a lot of grammar stuff. But that doesn't hold me from, you know, me being uh, better at communication. You know, that's where you need to learn, focus on where your weaknesses are, and then you can focus on that. Educate, uh, educate for the customer with balance. So this person feels the customer pain, use their uh, resources to go above and beyond. Same thing, we're going to come back to the customer where you're basically kind of like telling the customer, let me take care of this because I know they, sometimes you know, you know that this person will not be able to resolve this issue and only you can resolve it. So you, if you know that at this point, what do you can do? I mean, are you going to make this customer more... Uh, like you know, work for it. Are you gonna have them search more into your their own problems? No, I mean most of the time you just take over. You know, take over, get the solution, and then try to make it more that if a customer be more proactive, so they may be able to do a lot of tasks where you feel like they they will not be calling you for basic things. Then that's how you can make it. You can make a nice documentation for them. You can make some automation. You know, that's where you can learn some skills from our sites, other sites, you know, uh, try to learn PowerShell, stuff like that. And that's where you can help them. And they will really, really appreciate that because then you are really helping them with something that they have no clue, you know. So they, they were kind of like, oh, wow, you just did this for me, you know. Real respect for the customers. Again, uh, customer, 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 you know. So you respect, of course. You know, if you want respect for yourself, you have to respect other people. And that's how normal things work too, you know. So you really have to respect your customer. It does not matter how uh, a, a small or how a big problem is. I know a lot of people have this thing in IT. When someone calls you for something basic, they start sharing this information with other coworkers. Remember, other people are hearing you, and that's that's this is becoming normal in your job, and this is becoming normal to yourself. So you start talking about other people. Uh, you know, that's kind of like you you you're basically not giving an employee or a customer respect. They may be ten times better than you in on in their job and at their level. So if you do the same thing, they can really do the same thing to you. You should think about that, and then you know just just be respectful. Don't don't do anything stupid you know because a lot of people hear you a lot of people are around you you may sometimes forget you're talking to someone and you know it may it may just come out of your mouth so don't do that detective like troubleshooting skills this is where we're really good at you know this is where we teach you stuff and remember one of the hardest thing in help us in IT positions are a lot of people when they land a job or they look for the jobs they really don't know the troubleshooting skills they don't know the real world skills and that's what what you learn on the job but what we did in our jobskillshare.org site, we created a course on top of real-world skills. So now people can just go do their education, whatever they want to do. They can read a book. They can pass certifications. And now they got the certification in a few days. But the main thing is that how do I learn the troubleshooting skills, which makes me an IT pro? And that's where we help you. We help you with now everything, even the soft skills. We give you everything. And at the end of the video, I'll show you that. So, of course, this is something that we covered a lot. You know, I'm not going to go through the troubleshooting side of it. Analytical and process-oriented approach. This person understand support processes are important and not only follow them but help improve them. And again, coming back to my my main point is that you can be a partner in the company, not just working in a company just like a normal person. Of course, if you see a problem and you have a fix for it and you have this thinking, you know, just think ab about you know beyond your box, you know, in the small box. If you if you if you get stuck in this small box, then you're going to be always a known as a help desk person, you know, so you can move up. Uh, but if you start thinking about, you know, outside of the box and you start looking at this problem from a different angle, then you may be able to provide a really good solution to a company and that can lead you to many other things. Uh, I have many examples on our site. A lot of people have done that. 30K to 60K, 60K to, to 80 now. So, uh, and that's just six months of the period. I mean, I, I we have so many pe people have different things. Go to the site, check it out. Care for quality or quantity. 
when you have a when you have a long list of tickets, know the more coming, know, know there are more coming. It's it's tempting to work on as many as possible without truly solving the problem at hand. Focusing on the quality and support gives you okay. So this is more of like you know what's important to you. I mean, I mean, if you have, do you want to just close the tickets and not not really like solving them and doing like 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 I said in the beginning? Do you want to do a temporary fix? You can do that. But you don't want this customer to call you again for that same reason. Maybe you want to come up come up with a really good uh, solution. People are going to respect that too. People are going to love that, and you love yourself too because then you have a, you know more harder issues coming on your way, and that's where you're becoming a more uh, you know experienced IT professional. And that was the last one. Land a job. I mean, this information. None of these posts are going to. Um, unfortunately, they're not going to help you. This is where you're going to need a full course on this stuff. So let me show you where a lot of people are taking these courses. So here's the jobscashare.org site. Of course, you're going to go to the site jobscashare.org like this, just jobscashare.org. And then you're going to come down and start with this IT fundamental course. Of course, there are payments because we pay for the labs. We do a lot of services. We give you a lot of services. So there is definitely a payment for the, the new IT fundamental courses if you want to start from scratch. But hey, you want to start for free? Then you can do that also. We have done that. Help this entry level to, uh, level to specialists. A lot of course content, 80 plus hours of content for free. You can take it. All the videos, they're just not getting updated. That's the only uh, you know uh, bad side of it. We can't update it. There's too many. Uh, people now and we are not able to update these type of courses we're really uh, you know um, working on the premium membership and people who are paying for the services so yes we're doing that right now and a lot of new things are coming to this platform as you can see a new so you want to become a network engineer here's how you can start or if you want to become an uh, 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 you want to start an IT career from scratch then this is where you start that's how you do it if you have any question and if you like this video uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about this video, let me know. Thank you so much.